I welcome everyone to our services this evening, especially our visitors. Uh, if you have any visitors here, please stick around after services. Let us greet you. Uh, I have a few announcements. Uh, Roy Phillips went to the ER this afternoon. We don't know anything other than he has fever and chills. I'm sure we'll get an update from Terry on that. Uh, tonight our song leading will be led by Brother Clayton and the sermon will be brought by Jonah King. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, there's a, a youth event Saturday, August the 6th at 6 p.m. here at the church building. Uh, the Howertons will surprise, supply the meat, but there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin for other food items. Uh, need to remember our gospel meeting coming up next month. We pray for the success of it. Uh, Pat Cruz will see a surgeon the 24th. She is not going to sports medicine. Larry Chapin remains hospitalized with a bacterial infection. They're still trying to locate the source of the infection, but I think he's doing better, correct? Patsy Lane is home doing dialysis, is doing home dialysis and requests prayers for improved health. Kelly Herman, Julie Lamb's brother, is recuperating at home. Wilma Herman, Julie's mother, was diagnosed with COVID but is improving. Condolences to Ruth and Betty Shepherd on the passing of their son-in-law and also the passing of Betty's cousin. Everyone is invited to help Thad Lane celebrate his 90th birthday on August the 13th, 2 to 4 p.m. at the home of Phoebe Clare, 170 Oak Grove, Marshfield. And it says, no gifts, please. Provided Grillo's opens back up tomorrow, the men's breakfast will be there Tuesday at 8 a.m. And last thing I have is Sarah Craig's surgery went well. She was recovering at home. So thank you to everyone who offered prayers to God on her behalf. Please continue to pray for her progress with a speedy recovery. And that's from Ron and Kathy. If you would, pray with me as we start our services here. Dear God and our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day you've given us. We're thankful for all the many, many blessings you have given us. Most of all, we're thankful for you, your Son who gave us life for us. We. Uh, ask that you help us to live worthy lives of the sacrifice that he made for us. We ask that you be with this congregation here, be with the elders who lead it, and help us to grow and to bring your word into Marshfield and, and beyond. Be with us through this service. Help us to do the things that are pleasing to you and uplifting to you and help us to always live our lives for you. In Christ's name we pray. The first song this evening is number 470, the listening children on the board, or 470. But since, um, since we're not, don't have the songs up here, let's play for it a little bit. Let's sing all three verses and then have the refrain one time at the end, okay? 470. I heard an old, old story, how a caver came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power. And cross the line to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. I then obeyed his blessed command and won the victory. I heard about a mansion. Crystal sea about the angels 
is to him. He wants me to victory beneath a cleansing flood. Brother Phil, can we just an opening prayer, please? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, as we come before you at this time, thanking you for this day and many blessings of this day. I ask you to be with those who are in the hospital or under doctor's care. We ask that you direct the doctors. We ask that you be with the jail ministry here at Marshville. We ask you to guide, guard, and direct us and keep us all away from evil. We ask all things in your name. Amen. Number 453, 453, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the water drifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, her mother's smile this song. Faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely says, He will lift you by His love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, bills His will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be safe today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Before our lesson this evening, let's sing number 410. 410, since we're using psalm books, if you want to go in and mark number 464, I mean, sorry, that's uh, 947, sorry. 947, and we'll use that as our uh, invitation song. Now, number 410. As soon as the leader gets up. He leadeth me, O oh blessed thought, O oh words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still will God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his His 
this way full forward I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes missings of gorgeous gloom, sometimes when Eden's flowers bloom, my water still or trouble. Still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful forward I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace a victory's won, in death's cold ways I still will win. Since God blue Jordan lead up me, he lead up me, he lead up me, by his own hand he lead up me. His faithful forward I would be, for by his hand he lead up me. I've been looking forward to this for the last two weeks. Get to listen to my grandson preach. Jonah. Good evening. Um, I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to come and speak for you all this evening. Um, it's always a pleasure to get to break the word of the Lord to um, the congregation of the Lord's people. Um, but I'd like to preface this. Um, I'm going to be going back and forth between an iPad and my phone. My phone will be where I'm getting my scriptures from, so bear with me as I go back and forth. Um, and I'd like to start this evening's lesson off by posing a question. Um, it's more of a rhetorical question, and I want you to think for just a little bit, and I'll give time to think. But what does, when you think of the word worship, what comes to mind to each and every one of us? <clears throat> to a lot of people, both within the Church of Christ and in the, and in the denominational world, worship is simply showing up to church to a church assembly of some sort on any given day of the week or on a certain given day of the week and going through what we call the acts of worship in the church. Um, usually these consist of singing songs, praying, um, hearing a lesson, we take of communion, um, and we um, take an offering. Um, and we in the church call these the five acts of worship um, as they're laid out in the scripture. Um, and while each of these five things are integral um, and necessary and required in order to fulfill biblical worship um, to our Lord, the way in which we perform these acts is arguably even more important because we cannot sing, we cannot pray, or we can sing, we can pray, and we can come to church each Sunday and even pop in on Wednesdays sometimes. Um, but if you don't put the focus on what you're doing, why you're coming to these buildings to worship the Lord, um, what's the point? And so today I want to look at three things um, about how we worship. Um, first is why we should worship, um, going through what the biblical commandment for worship is, the precedent set for us in the Bible for worship. Um, and then I want to go over how we should worship, the manner in which we should worship. And then at the end, we're going to cover why worship is so important to Christians. And so if you want to start turning over to the book of Psalms, um, we're going to bounce all over the entire book today. Um, and so we'll start with why we should worship. 
And the first and most logical and reasonable answer is it is commanded of us. Um, Psalm chapter 95, verse 6 is where I'd like to start this off. Psalm chapter 95, verse 6 says, O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. If you back up, to verse 5, we see why we're supposed to worship this God that he has mentioned. The sea is his, for he made it, his hands formed the dry land. We see why we're supposed to worship God. He created us, he is the reason we're here, and he commands us to worship him um, through divine nature. He said, O oh, come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker, for He is our God. Um, if you want to turn over to Psalm chapter 29, verse 2, um, we're going to be going through um, Old Testament passages first here for why we should worship, just to show that this idea of worshiping is not a new idea. The worship that we are going to be going through tonight is not a new idea and has been around since the time of David and in Psalms and all of the Old Testament um, people that we hear about. Psalm 29 verse 2 says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Um, and so uh, if you want to turn over to Psalm 99, verse 5, we'll see. Psalm, there's so many different commandments about why we should worship the Lord, um, mostly having to do with him being the creator and him directly commanding the different psalmists to tell the people that are going to be reading this that they need to be worshiping him. Um, 99 verse 5 says, exalt the Lord our God, worship at his footstool, holy is he. So we get another reason why we should worship him, because he's holy. He is the perfect God, and he is the God that we should be worshiping. And so the last um, Old Testament scripture that we'll look at temporarily is Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 5. I told you we'd be bouncing around a lot. <clears throat> Isaiah 12, verse 5 says, Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant, o inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. So we see here, worship isn't just listening or bowing down before the Lord. We lift praise to the Lord as well. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. And so different acts of worship are required, and we see another one here in sing praises to the Lord. Um, and we see also that in verse, at the end of verse 6, it says, For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. When we're worshiping the Lord, the Lord is with us. And we'll get into that a little bit more um, later on. But now I want to look at some New Testament passages about um, why we need to worship the Lord. Um, if you want to turn over to Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Luke 4, verse 8 reads, And Jesus answered to him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So this is another um, important part of our worship. We shouldn't be thinking about other things that are going on. We should only serve the Lord. It's him who we need to put at the foremost of our worship, and only him do we serve. Um, Colossians 3, verse 16 will be our next um, verse, um, and it says, <clears throat> Let the word of Christ dwell in you reach richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And so these commandments we see directly come from the um, 
from Jesus and his apostles. We see that these commandments aren't that much different from the commandments that were given in the Old Testament. This practice of worship has been going on for an, a long time, and it's the precedent that has been set for us um, that we see in Psalms. Um, we see it in Matthew chapter 18, um, and we'll turn over there, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Um, says, um, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. We see again, when we gather together as Christians to worship the Lord, the Lord is with us. And then let's go to Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Acts 20, verse 7. It says, on the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them. Um, so we see the precedent set for meeting on the first day of the week. Obviously, that was set um, back with Jesus. But Paul is continuing this precedent with the disciples, um, and he is um, breaking bread with them. He's sharing a lesson with them. We can infer that songs were sang because it was worship, um, and it was happening on the first day of the week. And so that's where the precedent um, comes for part of the reason where the precedent comes for our worship and when we have our worship. And so another, our second reason um, for why we should worship him is um, it's how we learn. Um, and so if you turn over to 2 John chapter 1, verse 9, 2 John verse 9, Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Without learning, without devoting ourselves to learning the scriptures, we don't have God with us, is what John says there. Um, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, a verse that many of us know by heart, says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We see that the word of God that we're supposed to be studying and we're supposed to be learning about in our worship is what completes us and what we're armed with to go to teach the word to others. Um, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13 I really do apologize. There are a lot of scriptures in this lesson. Um, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13 says, And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what is really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. We see that the word of God does not come from man. It comes directly from God through men, but it comes directly from God, and we need to take it as what it is, like the people in Thessalonica did, and take it as the word of God. And so if we go um, back, or, um, sorry about that, I got fumbled up in my notes. <laughs> and so the third reason why we should worship is it's how we fellowship one with another. Um, if we go to John chapter 15, verse 5, John 15, Five reads, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, is, he it is that bears much fruit. For part, apart from me, you can do nothing. Um, and we'll go to Matthew chapter, or no, 1 John uh, 1 verse 3. 1 John 1 verse 3 says, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. When we're fellowshipping one with another, as we've seen um, in um, Luke chapter 4 and Colossians chapter 3, when we're fellowshipping one with another, we're also fellowshipping with the Lord. And so, fellowshipping lifts one another up, but it also lifts us each and every one of us up um, through a direct connection with the Lord. Um, Philippians 2, um, Philippians 2, verses 1 and 2. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, 
any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy. Complete, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. It's nice to be around people who are like-minded with us or who share similar ideals in the faith. And that's what's being portrayed to us here in Philippians chapter 2. And we can find encouragement with people who share the same thoughts as us, who share the same ideas as us, who share the same faith and salvation as us um, through our worship. And so fellowship is the third reason why we worship. So now we know why we need to worship. We know it's commanded of us. And now we need to know how we should worship. And so if we want to turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, Hebrews 13, verse 15 says, Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips and acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So we see here, continually offer, offer, continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. Our worship, we need to be offering praise to him um, through prayer, through sacrifice. Um, we need to um, share what we have. We need to share the word. Um, and that's how we should worship. John chapter 4, John 4 verse 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Um, this is a big part of what I was hinting at at the beginning of the lesson, when I said you can come to worship and you can go through all the acts, or go through all the motions, and still you won't be worshiping. God must be worshiped in spirit and in truth. If we worship him in spirit and in truth first, and then we're doing what we should, in the acts of worship, if we're doing all of those things while worshiping him in spirit and in truth, that is when true worship is achieved. Um, Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our worship is intended to be praise to the Lord. And whether we agree or disagree that um, instrumental music is part of worship, the praise to the Lord is what's being taught here in Psalm 150. Praising the Lord and seeking him in our worship is what um, leads to true worship. And praising him for what he's done for us um, also. And so then we'll go to Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Acts 20, verse 7, <clears throat> it says, On the first day of the week, when we gathered together to break bread, Paul talked to them. And so we see that Paul is preaching to them, as we read earlier. And so preaching, hearing a lesson from God, and breaking bread, communion, are to be acts of our worship. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26 says for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes communion again communion is seen as a very important part of our worship and should be taken out as often as we meet together and m multiple different denominations do not see it as it should or as that and it says in verse 26 for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes um, and then the last verse here will be 2 Corinthians chapter 9, um, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, 
reads, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We see the precedent set for our offering. We worship not out of habit, but out of our devotion and love for God. We shouldn't be worshiping because of what other people expect of us. We should worship to follow God's commandments. And offering is one of the commandments, just as communion is one of the commandments, singing, prayer, and speaking his word, and listening to his word, learning about his word, are commandments. And so I'd like to move on to why worship is so important. And the first reason worship is so important is it's encouraging to one another, and it's encouraging to ourselves. If we go to Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, says, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20 says, 5 says, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We need to be encouragements to one another, and we need to not neglect meeting one another um, in this time of fellowship and worship with each other. James 5, verse 13 says, <clears throat> James 5, verse 13 says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Verse 14 says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil of the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. We see countless examples, even today, of churches praying, and then, as if some miracle happened, somebody who was sick gets better, even if doctors have said multiple times that there's not much chance. And prayer is and encouraging, just as encouraging to those who are sick and to those who are, um, as it is to those with us in service. Um, and so we see here that if there's any suffering or no matter what the emotion is, we need to bring that emotion to God, whether it be through prayer or through song, through our worship, our emotion is conveyed to the Lord. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26 says, What then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. Encouragement isn't just making each other feel better. It's also building each other up in the faith. And that's what uh, Paul is saying here in Corinthians, that through our worship, we build each other up, stronger in the faith, stronger in our lives. Um, and then um, we also need to honor God's sacrifice um, through our worship. If we see this in Romans chapter 12, um, verse 1, where um, Paul states, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Our worship shows God that we are living sacrifice and holy and acceptable to him. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, um, verses 28 and 29. We'll only have a couple of more scriptures, passages. Hebrews 12, 28 through 29 reads, Therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. We know what happens if we live our life for him, and we know that we must worship in order to live our life for him. So we must offer acceptable worship with reverence to God in order to receive the kingdom that is talked about in verse 25, or in verse 28. 
And so we also have to show that we're following his will and not ours. Um, oftentimes, it may be more convenient on a Sunday morning for us to lay in bed and be um, get a few extra hours of sleep. In my case, I enjoy sleep very much. Um, but um, we need to show that when it's designated for us to worship, it's his will, not ours, that we're going to be following. We see this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 says, <clears throat> um, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. Now, I think if I raise or ask for a show of hands, if anybody wanted to be hung upon a cross and crucified, I don't think many would raise their hands out of just, that's something that they want to happen. But to follow the Lord and to follow our, um, to follow in his commandments doesn't call for each and every one of us to physically be hung upon a cross. It means to submit our will to him and not to ourselves. Matthew chapter 16, verse uh, 24 also illustrates this. This will be our final scripture tonight. Matthew 16, verse 24 <clears throat> reads, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, meaning let him push all his earthly um, cares away, let him push all everything in his life away, come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say unto you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. We need to put what we see as important in our lives. If it's not according to God's will, we need to put that aside and follow him. We need to follow his example and our worship is showing that we're following what he desires for us and not what we desire for ourselves. And so for a lot of people, growing up and going to worship becomes somewhat of a habit, something that they feel they have to do rather than desiring to do it. A lot of people see worship as a chore. Brothers and sisters, we see worship, we must see worship as an important aspect of our spiritual lives, as an important part of our spiritual walk and as a necessity to reach heaven with our God. <clears throat> Not only is it important, it is commanded of us to do so. But brothers and sisters, how are we to learn? How are we to lift each other up? How are we to follow the Lord without worship? <clears throat> and so if there's any here that have been entering worship as a member of the church that has not been have just been, so to speak, going through the motions, have not been worshiping God in spirit and in truth, has not put God first in their worship, we ask that you make that known. Um, we'll be happy to help and pray for that. Um, and if there's any here that have not started their Christian walk and need to do that, we also are more than happy, overjoyed to assist with that. If there's any need tonight, please let it be known as we stand and sing. Jesus is
Waiting today, waiting today. Come with thy sins at his feet, holy bow. Come and no longer delay. Calling today, calling today. Jesus is calling, is really calling today. Jesus is pleading, oh, with to his voice. Hear him today, hear him today. They who believe in his name shall rejoice. Quickly arise and away. Calling today, calling today. Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling to. You may be seated, please. As mentioned in our lesson this evening, uh, as the worship of the Lord's Church, we uh, will now have our communion. And I apologize. did that exact same thing this morning but I did not run off to go get it you're a loving church and you'll forgive me right we'll get our emblems prepared here With all that distraction, I wanted I want to do this. Uh, I know of us that are here this evening that were not able to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning. It is no less important. We need to focus our hearts upon the cross. We need to focus our hearts upon the Spirit of God and do this in spirit. So if you would, let's bow our heads. We'll partake of uh, the bread, which represents our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Our Father in heaven, we come before thee now and, and so grateful for the opportunities that we have to be able to gather here without persecution. Father, we're so grateful to be able to raise up our voices un unto you in and, and song and in prayer and to have learned and listened to a fine lesson this evening. Now, Father, as we focus upon the cross and the sacrifice that was made, let us do so with a love in our hearts. In Christ's name, amen. Our again. Our Father, we again approach Thee. Father, as we think upon Your Son upon that cross, the dying for us, and the shedding of His blood to cleanse us of our sins, let us not lightly pass this off in our lives. Let us focus and dwell upon these good things always. Father, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, which represents that blood, we want to thank you. In Christ's name, amen.
Is there anyone here that needs to uh, give an offering this evening? Please have a show of hands. bow our heads. Father, it is truly a great privilege to be able to give back a portion of what you give to us. Albeit monetary, we know, Father, that in our lives we, we work and dwell amongst our brethren in your service, and, and we thank you for those opportunities as well. We pray, Father, that as we give this evening, that we give uh, with love, with joy in our hearts. We think of those that have uh, gone before us, and we understand that, that the, they have worked and toiled at your will. And we just want to thank you for the opportunity, again, that you've given us to give back to you. In Christ's name, amen. Haley Haddock, folks. <laughs> Number 464, our closing song, 464. At the end of this song, they like to be led in our closing prayer. But again, I like to modify the song. Let's sing verses 1 and 3. And at the end of the third verse, let's sing the refrain only once. Do you understand? Okay. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. And then one day, I'll cross that river, I'll fight life's fight, no more with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the sign of glory and I know he reigns because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds a future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Brother Nacho. <laughs> Let us pray. Our more gracious and loving Father, we thank you for this opportunity you gave us. Thank you for Roy Jonah, his five points to worship you, the importance of worship you, Father. Thank you for that. And also, Father, we pray that you be with the Brother Clayton and Brother Paul, Kathy, and Phyllis as they labor together to keep this church in the narrow way. Father, we thank you for the deacons and pray that you be with them and help them to do the job they're designed to them. Father, now we pray that you with the brother Larry, watch over him and watch the doctors and nurses they provide to him, helping to heal, if it's will. Lord, we pray that you with the 
Many of the other ones are listed, long, long list of sickness. Father, we pray that you help them to heal. Father, be with those that lost loved ones, help them to be strong and put all this pain in you. Father, we pray that you with the armed forces, wherever they might be across the world, help us to be safe and be free. Father, we pray that you with the uh, police, with the, the, the take care of us, Father, to be safe. Lord, we pray that you bring us back next upon time. This is our prayer to our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>